In this episode of Lift Dark Builds, we talk all about the shop's latest addition, this Ellis 1600 mitering horizontal bandsaw. Alrighty, so I have been preparing for something rather big here at the shop lately. I've been doing a lot of cleaning out over here. A lot of these totes and pallets up here that you may have seen in the background are containing a lot of the various parts and pieces that I saved from the original machine shop. So I have been consolidating and cleaning out and under here used to be all totes and now it's all cleared out. And uh, the big Johnson horizontal bandsaw is no longer here because I have worked with the good folks over at Arc 3 to purchase an Ellis 1600 dual mitering horizontal bandsaw. It's something I've had my eye on for at least a year, maybe more. And I'm lucky that Frank over at Arc3 helped me source one from their North Carolina location. Arc3 is my favorite welding supply and metal, metal working supply place of all time. They take care of me really well. And uh, we're actually gonna start sort of working together here on the channel. Speaking of which, we just got confirmation today that Arc3 wants to partner with our channel. More details on what that means for you all and for us coming in future videos. But for now, we would highly recommend that you check out Arc3 Gases if you have one locally. If not, look for them online. They have some great deals. And yeah, back to the video. But I was just notified that the saw is ready for pickup at Arc 3. And so I figured I'd take you guys with me. Go see Arc 3. If you don't know what they sell, we can show the store a little bit and then pick up the saw and do a walk around. And then there's these two guys. Hey, that's the size of your bandsaw right there. How about that? Now, 44 and 70. Now YouTube knows. Hi, Kyle. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Dan? How you doing? Good, you? I brought YouTube with me today. Hi, YouTube. This is Dan. Friendly face you see when you walk in. I'm here to pick up a saw. I'm excited. A saw? Yeah, I got an Ellis 1600. And it's already here? Yeah, Shane said it came in late yesterday. Gotcha. Can, can I show the people the skunk works? Look at this. Everything you've ever wanted. Look at that. Look at that. It's so cool. Brand spanking new. It's the first new thing I've bought in a long time for the shop. Comes with a blade, that's good. Some literature. Got a chunk taken out of the wheel already. That's unfortunate. Everything else looks good. Doing a visual inspection of everything. Looks like somebody stuck a fork into the wheel. It's missing a big chunk. Obviously not a deal breaker, but it's an interesting discovery on a new saw. That sucks. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously not gonna be an issue. <laughs> Worth noting. <laughs> it's okay, the important part's all right. Whoa, that's got adjustable forks. That's cool.
we're back to the on our way back to the studio uh, with the new saw. Look at her back there. I'm extremely excited to put this thing to work. I think it's going to be a pretty huge asset to the shop. Just so you know, at the time of filming this video, February of 2023, the Ellis 1600 saw can be got for can be had for three thousand seven hundred and eighty four dollars and twenty two cents which if you're shopping for this saw is actually a bit of a deal and this is at arc three uh, anywhere you go to get one online like if you find someone who's selling it on ebay or like trick tools or any of that the saw they list the saw for right at four thousand dollars and i'm not sure if that includes shipping arc three transported this one from the mount airy location to the store in Roanoke and uh, I paid $37.84. So it pays to shop from your local welding store. How about that? I saved 220 bucks or something like that. Plus an untold amount of shipping. So all in all, given the, given the realm of saws that this thing occupies, it's bigger than most. It's, it's what I would consider light industrial, but it's, you know, it's under 10 grand by a good margin. It's under five grand and the quality it's made in America. Uh, you can get parts for it. There's all sorts of accessories for it. You know, no one, uh, all the sales reps at ARC3 said that they've, everyone that, that has bought one has been happy with it. So I'm hoping that I'm also going to be happy with it. I'm at least at this point very pleased with my purchase. And uh, let's get it unloaded at the shop, put some power to it. It runs off 110, so I can put it anywhere in the shop. And uh, we'll see what this baby can do. Ride safe back there. Well, there it is. Back, it's in its home, where she'll put put out a lot of work. Hopefully, you can see all the steel we got to cut for some upcoming jobs. This was an easy purchase to justify. Coming up soon, we'll get it unpacked, set up, dialed in, start throwing some chips. Got some literature. It's nice to have electrical diagrams, diagrams for replacing the bearings. Kind of nice. If you guys need these, I could scan them and send them to you. We've got a receiving and uncrating thing. That's what I'm going to read now. plug it in and see what kind of noises it makes. to come alive at first, but now it seems to even out. Got a weird vibration to it. It's like the starting capacitor in the motor is not happy. All right, well, let's try cutting. Let's check for squareitude. Very good, very good. Just a bit off. That's from top to bottom. So left to right, we're dialed. Top to bottom, there's a little bit of a wander. It actually wanders in a bit. 
So this is the bottom of the cut here. And it is, you can slip a spacer in between there. So really, for my purposes, that's close enough. There are adjustments on the blade guides and stuff. So if I wanted to get carried away one weekend and really dial that in, I will. But it's to be expected, most bandsaws wander. I mean, the, the quality of the blade has more to do with how the cut is uh, than the blade guides in some cases, so. All right, I've probably got some cuts to do with the job I'm doing, an aluminum job, but uh, I dig it. So, a little feature walk around. We got our off switch, on switch. We've got adjustable blade guides both sides. This quick disconnect clamp is kind of nice. You just throw your throw your material in, push this up to it, and then when you push this down, it clamps and it grabs pretty hard. You got to make sure that this knob underneath is tight and pretty tight, otherwise it'll push this back. Oh, but maybe you could just leave it backed up against it. That makes sense. First thing I notice is that it throws chips onto the miter gauge. That's a little weird, but that's okay. Very small issue. Looks like it has a sort of a wire wheel built in to scrape chips off the side of the blade. So we'll see how well that works. I guess you can loosen this. When this wears down, you can loosen this and push it up against the blade some more. So that's nice. Definitely sustainable. To miter, you just undo this piece down here and it looks like the whole thing is supported by these rollers. So it's actually really easy to move around. And this is why I bought this saw. Because I can go all the way to 50 degrees over here, as long as this thing isn't in the way. <clears throat> well, that, that ring right there is in the way, but at least 45 that way, and then at least 45 this way. Actually, that went past 50 on that direction. So I think they market this as a 50 degree miter saw, so it's definitely that. This motion is very easy to do. So I like that a lot. Let's try a miter. I'm gonna go over here. One thing that's weird is that the, the indicator is really high off the miter gauge, so it makes it hard to get a precise measurement. If I can lower that, I definitely will, but I don't know. I don't know if they built in slots for that or not. But in any case, it's nice. This motor is doing some weird stuff on startup. It like doesn't start smoothly until it gets going, so I hit the button now. See that? It's like bogged down and then it went up to speed. That feels like an issue with the starting capacitor, but and then like once you've once you've started it recently, it doesn't do that anymore. So I'm wondering if that'll just smooth out over time. But the uh, the hydraulic drops really nice. It's a Parker brand nut thing. So loosen it. Come down with it. Sorry, I got to use my camera hand. Then you can lock it and that locks it in position. And then you open this and the saw starts to fall. And then you can increase the speed at which it falls. Nice controlled plunge and then you can stop it by tightening that. So that's super nice. Everything seems really well built. You know, it's not like a built like a Swiss watch, but it's strong where it needs to be. They used quality components. You know, Parker is a known hydraulic or a fitting and a hydraulic and pneumatic equipment company. This is cool. It looks like this probably comes on with the switch. So you could put another accessory like a light or a water pump if you, it's not fit to be a wet saw, but I don't know. You could do whatever you want. Just have another switched thing. Air, maybe you have an air solenoid that blows chips somewhere. Who knows? Looks like we got a gearbox back here. You can change speeds, and I remember seeing a video on how to do this. You've got a, uh, a wing nut under here, and then you pull this lever out, I think. I don't really feel like messing with it right now, but you, have, you do have three different speeds, so that's nice. And there it is, there's the model number, RA-GR838, serial number 2082. Two springs back here, the springs definitely help. Ooh, it's all the way down. I don't want to hurt my blade. Go up, lock it in place. All right, let's cut a mi miter and see how it does. Let's cut a 30 degree miter. So I'm gonna 
uh, get it close, lock that part, and then we'll loosen our, let's put this up again, we'll loosen our clamp, push our material through, clamp it down, come over to this side, and we'll get it kind of low, and make sure our blade guide misses. Okay, so I'm gonna need to clamp it on the other side. You can't cross the, the saw with the clamp, so go up have it hold. So that's something I'll need to get used to doing, is considering which side I want to miter things on, and move it to that side. I'm gonna go here, and then loosen this, slide it around, tighten that in place. Up, clamp, love that. Very easy to use and very fast. Now we can come down with it. Line up our cut. We have decent line of sight, but it's you can't look straight down the blade, so that's a little tricky. Lock that in and fire it up. Weird little thing. And then we'll start the drop nice and slow. This blade is no joke. It hogs that material. Uh, so it's going to cut a new slot into the table. It's got three cut slots, but it doesn't have one for 30. And there it goes, starting to cut the slot. Interesting. Yeah, so it's got a 45 slot and a straight cut and a 45 on the other side, but it didn't have a slot cut for 30. So I actually just cut into the bed material as I finish that cut. But that's fine because now, now I have a slot cut for 30 degrees. So I can close the hydraulic valve, pick this up, let that hang out there, pull my clamp back up, slide that back, and we've got our cut. Get something to measure with and see how close we got to 30 degrees. So here's the cut we did. Let's see how close we got. Looks like maybe one degree off. Considering the gap between this pointer and the miter gauge, it's like a half inch, so it's hard to line up exactly the cut. I'm gonna try to move it just a hair. Get my sight picture right. He's got jammed back in there. Yeah, that's closer. So, let's see here, that close, we are basically right at 60, plus or minus a half a degree. So really, the tip of this indicator needs to be right over the number, but it's accurate. That's just user error at that point, so pretty cool. I like it. It's a nice cut too. It comes with a really good blade, quite pleased with that. See how we are across. Still a skosh out, top to bottom. Probably a less than a sixteenth. It's probably a thirty-second out over two inches. But again, I'll adjust that later. So got these rollers from my uncle, and I'm gonna see if I can't adjust this to that height and make it work. I'm also gonna use these bolts down here to level this out. Get it close here. That. Put this in here. Clamp that down. And then we'll adjust this, this piece until it's right. And I'm gonna go get my floor jack. Help me with that. Cool. Well, at least for now, we're ready to cut stuff. And my floor here is sloped, so if we move this around, things will change. So it might be that we spray paint some things on the floor so that this roller can be in the same place every time, and we're good to go.
So we've used the Ellis now for a few days and it's already really sped up production here in the shop. I have retrofitted two of these roller stands that I got from my uncle's shop to be the right height. And so now we have an in-feed and out-feed roller that makes uh, cutting and high volume really easy. It's located right here in the shop. It doesn't look like it's a space meant for a bandsaw, but it's right next to all the metal racks, so you can just pull some stock off the rack, load it in the bandsaw, and get to cutting. Big fan of how it runs so far. Uh, accuracy seems to be really good out of the box. We're cutting about uh, 1 32nd off over the two inch square tube. You know, a little bit of like a 32nd of wander, so that's not bad at all. Really dig how it feels and how it looks. Let's see if the motor's happy this morning. See, that's one thing that it does that um, is a little worrisome. So I'm going to send this clip to Ellis and Arc 3 and see if there's something that can be done about that. We might have to get a replacement motor or a replacement starting capacitor or something. But once the saw is up and running, it's super quiet, really smooth. Uh, I love the hydraulic lowering system. But once you start it, you can change the flow with this valve. The valve itself has numbers on it. And so as the saw plunges, it's cutting obviously. And then it has this auto off system. This little screw hits that bar turns that switch and shuts the saw off. So that's a super nice feature. You can set that thing and walk away and do something else. We haven't really messed with the blade or rollers or anything. This is actually my first time opening these. That door is just held with Velcro, so that's interesting. I don't see that lasting very long, but who cares? That's a minor thing. I love the orange and green color scheme. Kind of cool. So those, those open and shut. They give you instructions on the inside about how to tension the blade and how to replace the blade. So that's nice. It's just a steel, is that rubber? Oh, that is rubber. So there's a rubber tire on these wheels. So that's what the flaky paint is. The paint is just flaking off the rubber. No big deal there. Ellis, looks like they make their own parts or at least have their own parts made for them. It's cool, it's nice that you can buy an American made piece of machinery still. That's, uh, that's worth a damn. Love the quick, quick latch here. You just push that forward, push that down and that cams in place and then pull that back and go. Obviously the mitering is really easy. You just turn that handle there and then you can miter 50 degrees in one direction and 50 degrees in the other direction. It's got a little pointer there that shows you where the degree is. One thing I will say is that the pointer is really high off the scale. So it's kind of hard to know where that point is pointing. So I can see myself adjusting that in the future. Got a little wire wheel here to brush the chips off the blade. So the chips don't wear down the tires in here, the rubber. So that's cool. I, I assume that's what that's for. Um, it's probably good to keep the blade, the chips off the thing. It is kind of weird that the chips fall on the guide. Uh, you know, you cut a few, this was, you know, 10 tubes worth of cutting and now you can't see the guide anymore. So you have to constantly blow uh, those chips off. <clears throat> I kind of get in the practice of keeping an air nozzle nearby to blow the chips off fairly regularly because, you know, the chips falling on the ways here will wear out the bearings. Chips falling on the cutting surface will get it, you know, make the material not sit in there straight. So it, no matter what bandsaw you have, I think it's good practice to blow the chips off of it pretty regularly. Looks like it has a chip tray down here. It catches like some of it. You know, you can see that a lot of it ends up on the floor anyway. So there's that. 
The motor itself is one of sort of mystery. If you can see that, sorry. But over here we have a three-speed gearbox. It's on the fastest speed now. You can slow that down for whatever reason. And yeah, got a nice handle here. Got a pull-out handle here so you can move the saw itself around. It does have leveling feet, so there's two, two big bolts under here that screw in and out. So you can level this thing. Parker brand hydraulic fittings. Parker's a really well-known pneumatics and hydraulic hardware manufacturer, so that's nice. And of course, movable blade guides. Move them in, move them out, depending on what you're doing. Make sure the blade is nice and square. So there it is, the LS 1600, the newest addition to our shop here at Lift Dark Studios. Uh, already loving it. Just gotta figure out this motor situation. Sometimes it's happy, sometimes it's not. I'll try it again here. See, and now it fires up faster. It's like the longer it sits without being used, the worse that problem is when you go to turn it on. Very weird. In any case, very pleased. This is the LS 1600. My name is Tay Whiteside. This is Lift Arc Studios. Thank you for watching. Shout out to Arc3 for helping me get this saw as fast as I did. Uh, Ellis had an order lead time of like 12 to 14 weeks. I called Frank over at Arc3 here in Roanoke. He had one ready for pickup in about five days because they just happened to have one in the showroom in a, one of their stores in North Carolina. So that's the benefit of working with your local welding supply store versus uh, sometimes the manufacturer themselves. Love Arc3, happy to have them as a partner for the channel here and look forward to more collaborative videos with them. Also, a little teaser, look what came in the mail this week. What's that say, everybody? Is this the new Cyclone 262 MIG welder from Everlast? Find out in the next soon video. <laughs> that didn't make any sense. Okay, bye, thanks for watching.